So this is where it all started, the birth of a legacy. Hello everyone, Vectored here. Today I want to cover a Valiant character named Standing Wolf, the very first Shadow Man in existence. Now before we begin, this video contains spoilers for the soft reboot of the 2018 version of Shadow Man. If you have not read the whole volume, I suggest you click away. Okay ready? Let's go. Standing Wolf first appeared in Shadow Man Volume 5, Issue Number 6, in a story arc called Dead and Gone Part 3 and 4. The origins of the Shadow Man lineage supposedly began with Marius Boniface in the 1800s, Jack's great-great-grandfather. However, it actually dates back in 40,000 BC in prehistoric Africa. The story began in present time of Jack Boniface's spirit wandering through the ether, or timeline itself, caused by the Loa of the Undead named Baron Samadhi. As Jack travels back through time witnessing various Shadow Men performing their duties, his final journey stops at the prehistoric era of Africa. There, he sees the lineage of Standing Wolf unfolds. Though there are no records about his attributes that have ever been recorded, Standing Wolf has been described as having a very muscular physique, long dreadlock hair, stands at a above average height, and possessing a physical might strong enough able to take down a full grown lion with his bare hands. The events of the Shadow Man unravel through the spiritual eyes of Jack as Standing Wolf and some of his friends were on a hunt for food. After a successful hunt, they return home to their village, but to their horror, they found dead bodies of their families and friends. The village was being burned down by a rivaling tribe. Then they were confronted by their rival tribe leader, who calls himself the Soul Taker, a human being who somehow has the ability to control the power of one of the Loa. He is able to construct a form of spiritual armor, increasing his strength, durability, and devouring life force. Standing Wolf and his friends attempted to avenge their fallen loved ones. Sadly, they were all quickly killed but one, and Wolf himself. Defeated, Wolf was spared by the Soul Taker, wanting to make use of Wolf's unusual physical strength. If not, then left for dead. This triggered Wolf's lust for vengeance, and having recognized the Soul Taker's newfound power as well. There, he attempted to seek out the Keeper of the Dead, a shaman who can invoke the power of the Loa Pantheon. According to history, the Loa Pantheon are the spirits within the voodoo culture, which originated by African slaves coming to the Americas and Caribbean. Unlike angels and demons, they are not simply prayed to like other religions, but rather served. Each Loa spirit are distinct from one another with their own personal likes and dislikes, songs, dances, offerings, symbols, and rituals. And so, based on what Jack has witnessed, it seems that the Loa dates back way much older than he thought he did. Within the Pantheon, Jack learns of a particular Loa that was cast out among them. He is proved to be too wild and angry, perhaps one of the strongest Loa. His name is Bosu Kabulunen. When Standing Wolf finally met up with the Keeper of the Dead about his situation, he is informed by the Keeper that the Soul Taker is bound to his Loa, not working together. This means that the Loa is being enslaved and controlled against its will, therefore not making the Soul Taker as strong as he thinks he is. With this in mind, a Loa's power must be respected but they serve a higher power. Also, according to the Keeper, one must earn a Loa's respect in order to wield them. And so, as the Keeper performs a ritual casting the Loa Bosu upon Standing Wolf, Wolf must now channel his anger and control it with precision and not be engulfed by the spirit's untamed wildness. Standing Wolf now becomes the very first Shadow Man. Standing Wolf and his only surviving friend return to the Soul Taker and his men to exact their revenge. Now known as the Shadow Man, he actually performed different abilities that no other Shadow Man had done. Absorbing and devouring their enemies in darkness of shadow alone. Seeing this ability caught even Jack Boniface by surprise. Finally, the Shadow Man confronts the Soul Taker. They battle for a brief moment, but Shadow Man easily overpowers the Soul Taker. He then strips him of the spirit's gifts, relieving him of his power. Shadow Man spares the former Soul Taker, but the weakened foe boasts on exacting his revenge against Shadow Man. But that monologue was cut short where he was slain by Standing Wolf's surviving friend by a spear through the back of the chest. The Shadow Loa Bosu then leaves Standing Wolf's body, 
but who will only return when needed. Well, in the end, Jack Boniface learned everything that the Abbotters taught him was a lie. Marius Boniface wasn't the first Shadow Man, but he was first to be bound against his will. Jack then wonders how many were before him willing to be the host for a lowest spirit. What were the exact capabilities and power if the host and the Shadow Loa actually worked together? Well, that's all about Standing Wolf. Not much information to go on about him, but all I gotta say is thanks for watching. Vector signing out.